second round. So basically, you've got at this point a socialist and a guy from from who's considered from the political right. It's fairly unlikely. Yeah. Then there's the question of whether they really count the votes or not anywhere in the world. I sent these guys a uh, a poll that that came out. Four percent of the Ecuadorian population in this poll has faith and confidence that the votes are counted without fraud, that right. there's not fraud in the elections, that the votes are properly counted. 4% of the country. Okay, let's do it. Hello and welcome back to the Ecuador Insider Podcast. Jesse, Carl, our third partner, Brandon, is still on vacation. He'll be back, let's see, probably not the next pod, probably the pod after that. We still got to get the ladies on. We had very positive responses on the channel. Bring on the ladies. We're definitely going to coordinate that. But there's just a little bit too much to talk about right now mm -hmm. to kind of pause and do a, a sort of, you know, lifestyle Bill Cabamba episode, but we certainly will get to that. Thank you all for tuning in. If you enjoy the content, please put a like on the video. We really appreciate you guys tuning in, uh, commenting, giving us your thoughts, uh, the interactions with you guys on the channel. Is, has been fantastic. We don't always get to the comments promptly, so I just want to apologize for that. Um, we don't have a designated person who does that, and there are a lot of comments. So myself, Carl, Brandon, we do jump on there when we can, spend an hour or two answering comments, but sometimes some weeks can go by where there's unanswered comments. We will eventually get to them, but we, we, we do read them, um, and we really appreciate you guys chiming in. Yes. Vilcabamba Lifestyle Retreat, which there is a beautiful new promo video coming out for, we will link to that as well, uh, is October 13th. So please sign up for that, link below. We'd love to see you down here. It's an amazing nine days. I will let the promo video speak for itself on that. Um, so yeah, we got a, a kind of an action-packed pod here today. Um, we're gonna be talking a little bit about the election uh, that just took place. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, reasons for moving to Ecuador, good ones, bad ones, um, and otherwise. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, safety and security and also answer some questions that I thought were really good questions uh, that, that uh, have come in in various platforms that we've noted. So, yeah, it's happy to be back with you guys. Um, okay, to get started, um, yeah, we might as well jump right into the election. So we had... We had uh, elections on Sunday. Today is Thursday, so uh, five days ago, four days ago, five days ago, um, and they went, you know, they went as expected and not both, right? So it was widely believed that uh, I'm gonna still continue to forget her name. Is it Gonzalez? Is the last name? Luisa Gonzalez. Yeah, there we go. I finally remembered the last name. That Luisa Gonzalez, the uh, the the Coreista, the the I, I keep wanting to say 35, but it's now Cinco. And are they uh, what are they? Revolución, Revolución Ciudadana. Ciudadana. So the Citizens Revolution Party, um, the party of Correa. They're they're a socialist uh, party here in Ecuador. It was widely considered that she would finish as the number one vote getter, which she did. Um, the only question was, would she get to the 40% threshold she would need for there to not be a second round, a segunda vuelta runoff? Um, but once the latest events took place and the latest debate and, and, uh, and the assassination of a candidate, um, at that point she dropped in the polls and was really nowhere near the 40%. And so by the time the election happened, nobody considered that to be a very, uh, very likely. And so it would be her versus someone else. A lot of people thought that that would be uh, uh, Jan Topic. Uh, he's kind of the security candidate. Um, and then the other person that got some really good late momentum uh, was Naboa. What's his first name? Uh, Daniel. 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 Yeah, Naboa. Daniel Naboa. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and and so, yeah. There, initially, like months ago, Yaku Perez was mm -hmm. higher in the polls. He's sort of an environmentalist candidate from the. Uh, from the in indigenous, you know, largely considered like the indigenous party here. Um, and then, you know, Via Vicencio, who was who was assassinated, had a really good shot um, as well in the polls. And so it was interesting. So the last, you know, the last few days there was a debate. And, and I think, you, you know, you watch it so uh -huh. you can talk more of this in a second. But there was a debate that Naboa did very well in. Yep. Um, a lot of people liked, you know, what he had to say. And he ended up finishing a strong second. I mean, I think he finished with about 23% of the vote. Uh, uh, Isabel Gonzalez finished with about uh, third, Luis Gonzalez, excuse me, finished with about 32 or 33% of the vote. Um, and and then uh, Topic ended up finishing fourth 
Um, the replacement candidate for Via Vicencio finished third with about 16 or something like that, uh, 14 or 16, and then Topic was right just below that. So those were, you know, those were kind of, and, and Jakub Perez got like maybe, maybe two or three or four percent at the most. He didn't end up being a serious candidate. Neither did, um, did uh, Ervas, who I kind of liked in the last election. I think he got like one percent. Um, but yeah, so so it's Naboa, uh, it's Naboa and uh, Luisa into the second round, um, which will be in October, um, and we'll have a second round. So basically, you've got at this point a socialist and a guy from from who's considered from the political right, um, you know, more of a business friendly candidate. But it's interesting; he seems to be a pragmatist, Naboa. Um, he seems to be somebody that you know he's not he's not a fire and brimstone type type speaker um he, he seems to be very pragmatic he's uh you know i read i didn't watch the debate i'd love to hear from you about that um but he i've read that he um you know he was very sort of uh, rec uh, conciliatory in the debate and he was talking very calmly and he wasn't getting into spats yeah, um and he was sort of just laying out his ideas and his plans and when you i have watched a couple of interviews of him when you when you hear him interviewed you know I like the guy personally. Like I, I, you know, yes, I'll. You guys can all yell at me for my political views, and I'm <laughs> fine with that. But, uh, but I personally, you know, I personally seems like a decent guy to me. Um, could that be the? Could the polar opposite be true? Sure. Um, but anyways, that's that's kind of what the election is looking like, and um, we'll see what happened. It's it's very similar to what took place um, two and a half years ago when Lasso was elected. We had the first round. Uh, was uh, was Arauz, I forget his first name, was the same from the from the Korea party, which I think was Alianza País then still. Um, Arauz and and the question was would he get to 40 and then who would finish second? And so Lasso finished again in this sort of strong second. I think Arauz finished around 34, 35 percent of the vote then. Then they had a runoff and uh, Lasso won by about four or five points. Um, and so because basically the way the country is politically is the the Rafael Correa is very loved by his base, right? He has a very strong base that really, really, uh, really is very loyal and, and, and very fervent in their in their views, and they will vote for whoever is his candidate, no matter what. That seems to be 30, 35 percent, you know, of the country. Most other people are polar opposite, right? Like everyone else kind of hates Rafael Correa and wants nothing to do with Correismo, uh, 21st century socialism. And so the other candidates who lose, uh, tend, their votes tend to go to whoever is not the, yeah. the Rafael Correa candidate. In this case, that's Naboa. So we'll see if it plays out like the last one did or not, or if more, more votes this time go towards uh, Luisa, Luisa, right? Gosh, I'm bad with names. <laughs> Go to uh, Luisa it's, Gonzalez. It's pretty unlikely, though. It seems fairly unlikely. Yeah. Then there's the question of whether they really count the votes or not. Anywhere in the world, who knows? Um, <laughs> you wanna, you wanna quote the, the statistics? Of oh, that was great. <laughs> so I sent, I sent these guys a uh, a poll that that came out. Four percent of the Ecuadorian population in this poll has faith and confidence that the votes are counted without fraud, that right. there's not fraud in the elections, that the votes are properly counted. 4% of the country. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. It's wild. It's yeah. wild. Yeah, yeah. It's wild, Anyways, yeah. tell us a little yeah. bit about the debate. What, what were you, what did you see in the debate? What did you think about Naboa? Yeah, no, I thought Naboa did really well. I can't really think of anything specific, but I, I remember, as you said, he was very calm, very composed. He's clearly a very intelligent, you know, well, well-spoken, uh, he's a young he's guy, young, right? He's yeah, he's very young. I don't, know. I don't know. He looks very young. young. Um, I think he got a lot of props for his stance on the economy, on how to improve, yeah. you know, economical things and how. Uh, but I, I really can't think of a detail right now. But I, I remember um, he did really well. And uh, an interesting part is that uh, his father, <laughs> Alvaro Novo. Oh, and I need to correct that who, too. But go ahead. Who's, yeah, who's still alive? <laughs> yes, but who's been running for president for forever, forever, yeah. and was never elected. Um, and it's the first time that now his son is, is going for, uh, for president and, and is elected, you know, for, well, not elected yet. He made it through, <laughs> but it, yeah. most likely that he, he'll be elected, potentially. Uh, and I think, I think actually, I think the final candidates when Correa was elected was, first time was Naboa and Correa, if I'm not mistaken. Alvaro, the father. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay, interesting. 
Yeah, so so thank you. So someone pointed out on the channel, I meant to get into this, that Alberto Novoa is alive. I mentioned in a video that he was deceased. That's the father. It's actually kind of a funny story why I thought that. I was driving and I saw an advertisement for the son for Novoa and he, he had a picture of his father at the bottom and it said something like, you know, from, I thought that it was like, it inferred that he had passed away, which I didn't know he had passed away. Mm -hmm. But then that filed in my brain that, oh, he passed away. So he is he has not passed away. Um, so uh, Alvaro Naboa is still alive. And so we've mentioned this before, but the Naboas are a very famous uh, business family. You know, I'd say business and political, but really mostly business. They, they own a number of large uh, enterprises in Ecuador. They're very well known. I actually have had some interactions with the sister, um, who is, we got a party going next door. We'll see if it's the, the traditional Ecuadorian dancing. Uh, at least, I'm sure they're over there performing. So that's usually their music. You can hear them. <laughs> oh gosh, um, they're good. They're good. They are good. <laughs> you can't see them, but we can hear no. them. <laughs> we, they're at a, the old folks' home. Yeah, there's the a retirement home right yeah. next door, and they're well, rocking. Performing for them. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah. So, so Albert on the boa is a very over the top personality uh he'll say anything he's kind of one of those guys and he's a little bit of a polarizing figure but i've noticed that Pete, no one took him seriously like when i would ask people in other elections what about this guy you know naboa they would say like ah you know he's a clown like he just you know he and um it's interesting you know i think i think um you know i think people moved away from topic maybe partly because they don't trust him yeah. You know, there's things they don't trust about him. Yeah. And Naboa being a soft-spoken, conciliatory sort of pragmatist is very in line with the Ecuadorian people. Yeah. You know, like 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 people here, even though, you know, Correa, obviously, he was a fire and brimstone all the way and, you know, very outspoken and very polarizing figure. But that's not how Ecuadorians are at all, right? Ecuadorians are very soft-spoken, uh, very uh, sort of under not underhanded is not the right word, but um, you know, they're, they're, not, they're, not, they're not in your face at all, right? It's a very uh, sort of behind the scenes, quiet, the, 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 the significance is in the tone and the movement and you know, it's that kind of culture and Naboa seems to, seems to represent that to some degree sure, sure, from sure. what I've seen. Yeah, Jan Topic or Jan Topic, they pronounce it differently. Um, yeah, he was, he was like new blood. He was not a political guy at all, but there was some, the main two reasons I heard, that I heard anyways is that he's, he owns a lot of security companies in Ecuador. So it would be kind of a conflict of interest because this whole thing was about beefing up the security. Uh, and then there was, uh, it was an interview where he was smoking hemp or like smoking like what people thought it was cannabis, was marijuana or something, but he was, it was a legal CBD cigarette or whatever. But he is like smoking that uh, while he's being interviewed, and a lot of people gave him a hard time about about that. You know, guys you know, smoking pot on TV, basically. <laughs> which anyways. yeah, I mean, this <laughs> drugs like even weed, marijuana in Ecuador oh, yeah. is still has a, is still you know sort of considered almost like the U.S. might consider cocaine or right, something. Right, right. No, it's considered a drug. I mean, yeah, it's more of a traditional culture here. They they're barely. I mean, they just legalized um, CBD few years ago right like non-thc right. cbd yeah and i think they got rid of the criminal decriminalization de they decriminalized small amounts of possession i believe as well but of marijuana of marijuana and maybe some other drug, yeah. yeah so okay that kind of covers some of the elections of anything else on the election no, you want to hit on yes cool um so let's see what do we want to jump into next um we had actually we had a good question that that I thought um, we can we can touch on really quick. So uh, many of us are moving from countries with a different set of natural disasters to consider. In Ecuador, there is chance of earthquake, volcanism, and forest fires. I'm not usually extremely prepared, but I am here in a state in the U.S. and have basics in place for snow emergence. Anyways, a question about the natural disasters in Ecuador. Great question. Um, Great question. You know, let's touch on it. So. We're on the ring of fire here. Um, so volcano, uh, excuse me, well, volcanoes also, but earthquakes exist, volcanoes exist. Um, the, the earthquake risk is highest on the coast, uh, particularly the northern coast, but on the coast in general, and then up north. Um, there's fault lines there that there's large earthquakes from time to time. 
Um, you know, as, as long as you build in a seismic proof way, of course you're okay. But in our region and in the Amazonian region, that risk is much, 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 much lower. Um, we never have the epicenter of a, of a uh, earthquake in this region um, at all in my time here, certainly. And, um, you know, we, we get little tremors. Sometimes we feel them when there's a big one on the coast or a big one in Peru. But um, the, the, the risk is pretty low in, in, the, in the southern Andes and, and in the Amazonian region. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the person who was asking a question, they were considering potentially the coast up north, Cotacachi. I know the, the person. And, um, and yeah, there is definitely more, more likely to have earthquakes on the coast, at least. Um, yeah. And there are some in the Amazonian regions as well. Peru. Yeah. Actually, they had an earthquake in Guadalquiza, somewhere on Guadalquiza, um, up in the Amazon. But yeah, in this region here, we only we only we feel them slightly, but there's never been any damages. Guadalquiza is like pretty far north, I believe. It's like a three, four hour drive. Oh, it's from, not from, that from far. Zamora. It's like halfway. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't think it was very strong. Um, <clears throat> and then yeah, volcanoes. Again, those are all in the north. Um, right. The volcanoes are all in the north, so there are volcanoes, there's active volcanoes, they're beautiful, there's volcanic lakes, you can hike them, you can do all kinds of stuff, um, but d down in the south we don't have any. Yeah, yeah, and in terms of the earthquakes, Ecuador, the Ecuadorian building code is earthquake proof, I mean yeah. it's earthquake, it's designed for, for earthquakes, so whenever you get an engineer to design mm -hmm. the structural engineering of the house, it will be earthquake um, made for earthquakes. So. Yeah, there was a big earthquake in Puerto Viejo in 2016, uh, which 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 knocked the. I mean, it was bad. It was, was bad. That was really bad. Um, and yeah, there was maybe since then they changed the. the they did. Yeah, yeah, they did increase the codes since then as well. I mean, people, for the most part, built that way anyway, unless they were cutting corners, right? Um, or it was very old construction, but. You know, even that 26 earthquake, which was huge, I think it was like 7.2 or 7.4, you know, or I don't know exactly. You guys can look it up. But um, yeah, we felt that in Loja, but mm -hmm. just barely. It was not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we didn't feel yeah. it too strong. But it was pretty bad over there. They had bridges collapsing. It was, yeah, yeah. It was a pretty serious. Uh, yeah, I mean, good construction had no problem at all. Mm -hmm. Held up fine. But but some of the buildings that weren't built well, some of the older buildings collapsed and people died. It was It was tragic tragic event at the time here in Ecuador. Um, forest fires, they happen during dry season. Mostly mostly people burn fields to get ready to plant crops and the fires get out of control. Um, generally speaking, they're contained pretty easily and quickly. You'll have a couple every year um, yeah. in, in this region. Yeah, there's a couple of them. I, I kind of feel like because of the mountainous terrain, they don't spread too far. Like potentially they kind of get up to the top and that's they kind of die there or they get to a valley and they die there because they don't seem to spread right. like far and wide no. they're like localized like maybe you know 20 30 hectares or something i don't know just averaging but uh yeah we've had a few forest fires here well and it almost but, never i've i've never in my 10 years here i've never seen those fires actually burn the forest right like they they just they burn like if you i don't know how well the camera can pick up behind me but most of that is grass like right. most of that are grasslands they'll burn through those yep. then the fire department will get up in the hills and fight it as will the community yep. and they'll usually get it out pretty quickly but even if it's a bad one it doesn't i've never seen it burn a fire the i mean burn a forest the forests tend to be damp and moist sure. and have streams and rivers and moisture and yeah yeah it would it never it would never build a burn like the port of carpus or no or up in the or even the reforested areas but yeah, it will burn the, the dry grass, basically, in those small bushes. Yeah, during dry season, which is now. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, cool. Well, but I've never heard of any more, anyone's houses getting damaged or anybody no. you know, getting... Uh, and like, probably you want to... If you build a house somewhere where there's potentially prone to forest fires, you, you want you want to keep the sort of, you know, around the house pretty, uh, pretty clear, you know, so you don't have the fire get up to the construction, I guess. Yeah. And, but most houses here, even though they do use some wood, they're pretty fireproof, you know, the houses with like bricks and cement and right. tapia and, and, and block, adobe blocks, not things that could catch on fire. No, you never, there's like, I mean, I, in 10 years, I have never heard of someone's house burning down from a, from any kind of fire. Um, I think I saw one little house once right by the main road. Did you? Yeah. yeah. And I think half of it was wood and that part burned down a bit. Yeah. Um, that was, yeah, I don't, 
yeah, I, I forget who it was or what, but uh, it was a, a small fire then. Yeah, and I, and I think the, 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 the lack of house fires is exactly what you said. The building materials are just not flammable. Right. Like they use, they, like you said, concrete, brick, earth materials, yeah. Um, all right, well, that leads us into, actually, I forgot one thing. There was also uh, a, it's not a referendum, what the heck's it called? They have these in California when they put them to the public vote, I can't remember, but there was a question put to vote as well whether they should stop drilling for oil, they should ban oil drilling in a section of Yasuni National Park, uh -huh. uh, and that passed with about 55 or 58 percent of the vote, something like that. So they're going to stop drilling right. in Yasuni, um, and that will account for about 12 percent of uh, Ecuador's re oil revenue. Wow. Um, so it's not insignificant. It's not, of course, all of it. Right. Um, it's a controversial topic. I think you know a lot of people would like to see that stop. Would like yeah. to see a lot of the drilling stop in these beautiful parks and pristine areas. Um, so you know it passed. Uh, depends how you view it as good or bad, but but uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. The Yasuni National Park. I, we gotta go there one day. I know. We, we need to go, go out video, there and check yeah. it out. It's like deep into the Amazonian region. It's down into the yeah. river basin. It's in this flat Amazonian, thick jungle. Biodiversity is extremely high over there. There's yeah. jaguars and all sorts of birds and all sorts of like, insects and everything. Yeah, yeah. And there's still some tribes that have been untouched. Yeah, by civilization yeah, yeah, yeah. In there, there's like some. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. You gotta go out there. I think I don't know. I've heard there's still tribes that have been untouched. Even the tribes, I think now they've had some contacts with civilization. There's there's retreats you can go and yeah. go be with the, yeah. the tribes. There's no power, no internet. You know, and they you go live with them. Yeah, I mean, you would get <laughs> there on boats and right. things like that. They like canoe up the river, to, yeah. and it's yeah, it's those kinds of things you can absolutely do here, no problem. Yeah, yeah, we should go out there one day, make a, a little documentary. Yeah, <laughs> I would love to. I would yeah. love to see what see what's going on back there. That's uh. Beautiful. Yeah, I mean, Ecuador had a big oil spill years ago. It was probably, what, maybe 15 or years ago or something. I think it was Chevron. It was Chevron. like a famous mm -hmm. oil spill. It contaminated a, a, a part of the Amazon, which was, you know, horrible, obviously. And so, yeah, I mean, I think, I think um, you know, it's, again, it's like Ecuador gets its money largely from oil. Mm -hmm. So it needs to drill oil for the, for basically the government to function. Um, and at the same time, the ecological impact, like, you you know, you don't want it, especially in in places like that. So right. that passed. Um, yeah, because Yasuni was a national forest. It was a protected yeah. area. Yeah, yeah. And then they allowed for some oil company to drill there, I guess. Yeah, I don't know who was drilling, but yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so that brings us, you know, let's let's jump into something I've, I've been kind of wanting to address. I'll see how well I can do it, but... Um, <laughs> You know, I think we see comments, we get a lot of emails, um, you know, I sort of skim them sometimes to just kind of get a feel for what's going on and what people are asking and making sure that our answers are up to par and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, there's almost, I almost view it as like, there's almost kind of two, two, two um, places that the energy of the questions or the energy of the person who's asking the questions originates from. Mm -hmm. One is sort of like, I'm escaping something. Yeah. And the other is sort of, I'm excited about X, Y, or Z. Mm -hmm. And I just want to address that for a minute, right? So first of all, you know, I moved here in, in summer of 2013, partly escaping something. Yeah. Um, I, I, I have come to, not regret, but I've come to change my attitude about those things since then. But at that time, you know, I was worried about what was going on in the U.S. with the with the with the financial system, with the monetary system, um, with you know some of the things going on in the world, you know, geopolitically and otherwise. I was worried about I was worried about X, Y, and Z, and I was looking for where can I go that doesn't have winter that I can be closer to my food and water supply, that I can create a beautiful life for my, my at the time, five-year-old daughter, mm -hmm. um, you know, et cetera. And, you know, the, the, the Southern Andes of Ecuador is what sort of fit all my criteria. I didn't want to be near a volcano or a major fault line. I didn't want to be near like nuclear, big nuclear power facility. I wanted to have a, you know, safety and I was looking for some freedom. I didn't want the government involved in every aspect of my life and things like that. 
Um, and this was, you know, this was the place that kind of hit on everything that I was looking for at the time. But to some degree, I was, I was running away. To some degree, I was getting out of Dodge. It felt like to me at the time, right? Sure. So I, completely understandable, right? And and the world right now is in turmoil. You know, there's, I don't think anyone can deny that, right? The, yep. We've got uh, wild geopolitical events going on. We've got wild financial events going on. People are worried about the currencies. There's there's there's, there's uh, division and, and, you know, people either hate Biden or they hate Trump or they hate each other for whoever they like or yeah, there's the all divide this. divide is strong in the U.S. Eh? There's a huge divide. Yeah. People are very divided. Very divided. It's it's. Right. It's, you know, and then of course we had the lockdowns and COVID and people are divided over that as well. And you saw the forest fires all over the place. Crazy. Hawaii's burning down Maui and yeah. Canada has forest fires all over the U.S. as well. Right. Big time. The West Coast and everything. Yeah. That hasn't, I mean, there's been forest fires, but not this bad. Yeah. Like right. I, mean, I don't want to get into too much <laughs> into that, but uh, right. There may be reasons for that. But, um, yeah. But uh but anyways, but that's a great example, right? Of, of, of just some of the craziness that's going on. People, you know, there's obviously war going on in Ukraine and, and, right. and in Europe and there's concern about that and so on and so forth. So, you know, it's very easy, I think, to sort of have a fear-based mindset to say kind of like, you know, oh my God, everything's breaking down. I gotta X, Y, or Z. Escape, yeah. And I just wanna, I gotta escape, right. And I just wanna say, as advice, like from my heart, that's not a good reason to move. It could be an ancillary benefit that, you know, you, you might be in a place that those things are better than where you came from. Sure. Like, I think we are in a place where I don't have to really worry about all that stuff we just yeah. talked about. Sure. So that's an ancillary benefit, but it's not a good reason to pick up your life and make massive changes because, and I've noticed this for person after person over the years as well, if you're not going to do something proactively because you're excited about what you can do, all the stuff that bothers you is just gonna follow you. It's like, <laughs> it's like you're gonna be who you are wherever you're at. If you're, if you're sort of fearful of na now, you're gonna be fearful wherever you end up, right? And so I just want to encourage people, like there's a lot of amazing reasons to live here. You know, the community is incredible. The weather's incredible. The nature is incredible. If you're in an organic, healthy lifestyle, it's very easy to do here. The culture, the Ecuadorian people are amazing. The culture here is wonderful. Um, you know, it's still a very safe place to be um, in the region we're in, certainly. And I would, I would argue most of the country. Um, the cost of living. The cost of living is, is <laughs> it, practically nothing. It's a nothing. big reason, yeah, to come here. <laughs> and and so like, you know, if you're excited about, you know, hey, I, I have this life dream or I have this goal, I have, you know, I wanna have this lifestyle with my family or, or I want to, you know, create this thing for the community or I've always wanted a horse farm or, you know, I've always wanted to swim in the river every day or I've always wanted to live in a community where people X, Y, or Z, are, or, or you have some project you're excited about or some agricultural thing or, you know, whatever it is, or, or maybe you just want to retire and relax and surrounded by a lovely, you know, lovely nature and all. Those are great reasons, you know, yep. those are great reasons to come. So I just kind of, just kind of sure. want yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, I can understand wanting to run away from some things, right? Just like you did and, mm -hmm. you know, to some extent I did as well. And for all the reasons you've stated, like, it's very understandable. You don't want to be caught up in some major thing right um, and so you're running away from something but i think that your point is like you, you also want to be running towards something and having something to look forward to and there's so many great benefits of living here um you know it's not a perfect place either but but yeah i choose to live here with my family i think this place is amazing like i, I wouldn't really want to be anywhere else at this point and uh for the, for the reasons you've stated i mean you know just look behind us like this is what we get to see every single day the weather is comfortable people are amazed about the weather like i have like we were just with the you know the gentleman this week and he's just like every day is so comfortable it's the, the weather is perfect every single day like doesn't it get worse like I mean, there's a little drizzle sometimes but that's about <laughs> it like and even that's comfortable walking in the rain here is not uncomfortable no. <laughs> it's nice you know, we used to go for bike rides and it starts pouring and we're just riding our bikes in the rain and it's really nice. Um, yeah. And, the, you know, yeah. You guys, isn't it? The, I mean, the, <laughs> the weather's so good, I'll find myself 
I'll find myself apologizing to people about the weather <laughs> because it's like, you know, it's like 68 or it's like 72. It's not like that warm or there's like a day when it's cloudy or like it's raining a little bit. And I'll find myself being like, well, you know, this isn't super typical for this time of year yeah. or just sort of saying something about the weather. And they're looking at me like, <laughs> are like, you kidding me? <laughs> the weather here's incredible. And I'm like, oh, well, if they think this is incredible, right. you know, <laughs> it gets better. Yeah. 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 And, you know, the cost of living is a big reason. I mean, we, you know, you hear people all the time, like complaining about how inflation is out of whack and off the charts and, and uh, you know, wages are, are, are low and cost of living is high and it's even just hard to pay the bills. Like you can come here with a very basic pension and live like a king, basically, you know, uh, have someone clean your house for you and someone cook for you and eat out every single day. And you know, I don't want to over promise, but like you can live here under $2,000 a month, very comfortably. Yeah. I mean, um, two, two, two to $3,000 a month here in terms of money that you're spending, your wealth you're like that's that's a wealthy person's expenditures monthly right right of course yeah the, the wages are lower here but uh if you come here and you can work online or if you have a pension some money coming in and then there's business opportunities here that are that are great as well investment opportunities you know you have you have to look for them but we can help you with that and uh there's a lot of things that are not being done here so when it comes to finances uh there's a lot of a lot of people and i don't want to <laughs> give other people's ideas but people write to me all the time with different ideas of things they want to potentially start here and you know there's a lot of things that are just don't exist here so lots of good business opportunities and that can be implemented yeah it's kind of the wild west here in that way still huh? you know still right at least in this part of the country like less so of course in Quito cities, and yeah. Guayaquil and places like that but there's still a lot of things that just don't exist that you can come here with a good idea and do and and all that so some of this leads me leads me to another point. So I was watching um, I was watching a couple of things in you know, in my scrolling <laughs> that we all do now <laughs> um, the other day, right? And it just it reminded me sort of of a perspective or just of a couple of points I want to make, right? So you know, who am I to say if there's an agenda behind this or not? I don't know, but there seems to be there seems to be uh, in the media well i think i think the media makes everything look scary actually if i had to say that i think you know i think uh anytime you turn on the tv the news a movie whatever they make they make everything look scary like i grew up the images that were in my head growing up about latin america are laughably false but they were also scary like i thought this was i thought latin america was like a dangerous, scary place, and there was like you know an angry guy with a knife around every corner because of the crap that the yep. TV put in my head, right? Interesting, yeah. And uh, you know, I think when I look at sort of the the narrative, right? This this part of the world, while certainly not perfect, right? At all, it's it's it, there's people and governments and and uh, and uh, you know all the problems of of. That, that every that there is everywhere right it's just a different set of problems perhaps but you know there is no nowhere in the world at all that's perfect everywhere has its pros and cons but this part of the world is there is no winter right it's very fertile the 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 natural resources are abundant the people are amazing it's a great place to live and i think sometimes through the media they'll make it look like this sort of third world, dangerous, scary, you know, place that you just shouldn't just stay away from there. Yeah. It's almost as if it's to keep you in, you know, it's almost as if it's to say like, stay where you are, you know, don't. And I just, you know, I just, you've got, we've got problems here, right? Like we had in the media, obviously recently, it was a huge story. We've covered it extensively where a presidential candidate was shot and killed, you know? Uh, a wild event by any standard um, and we've you know we've had some news in Ecuador around some of the cartels activities uh, on the coast and what that you know what that means for the country and you know going back to the elections Naboa ran entirely on jobs and security like that's his whole his whole platform and and the security issue is forefront on everybody's minds right now um, you know be, because of, of of some of this cartel activity so so I'm not downplaying that, 
right? Like those things exist. You look at the U.S. and other places. I mean, in every major city in the U.S., there's homeless encampments, like massive homeless encampments. The drug problems in the U.S. are rampant. The crime problems in the U.S. are rampant.、Um, but people are from there; they live with that; they're used to it. So maybe it doesn't seem as scary, and maybe it's not, right? Maybe that's the media making it look,、right. you know, scarier than it is there as well. Yeah. But I'm. This place is not a scary place at all. Like this is a beautiful place that, if you watch the news, could look really scary. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I mean, the U.S. is the best country on earth, right? Isn't it? I like it. That's what Americans say. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> But don't Americans think that the U.S. is like yeah? <laughs> I mean, we're we're, we're we're taught that growing up. I think、we、there is、that. a lot of truth to it in many ways, <laughs> in the sense of like the they've led the, they've led on a lot of things. Yeah. Um, of course, a lot of people would say as well that they've been horrible in many ways, which of course is true, also. But,、right. but yes, we grew up with that e- <laughs> with that ethos.、Right. I mean, I, I I don't know statistically what it looks like, but I've heard most Americans have never traveled like, across yeah, the border. I've seen、right? that those、like、stats they, too. Yeah, they, 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 sometimes they haven't even traveled to the next state over.、Uh, <laughs> right. Some some of that anyway. Some、sure. Americans, but、uh, but yeah. Well, like you talk about homelessness, it's a huge issue in Canada as well. Where we were. It was it was sad to see you know how、yeah. many there's homeless camps around the cities and you see people that live in tents and stuff. There's none of that in Ecuador, not even in big cities. No.、Nope. Somehow, like I don't even know how that works. Like there's there's just not no homelessness here. Families will take care of people. They'll find a place、yeah. for them to stay in the backyard. I don't know, but there's nobody sleeping on the street like、yeah. anywhere. You know, there was a wave of Venezuelans that came in, but it seems like they they have shelters for them or something because I've never seen people sleeping on the street here. Even in Loa, or in major cities, definitely not in Vilcabamba.、Uh, <laughs> and、um, there's a few drunks that that fall asleep accidentally. <laughs> there's the four the four town drunks. There's you, the four town drunks. You can、right. identify them. Yeah. They they're the same little group, and they sit around, and eventually they're asleep <laughs> on the side of the road. But not because they don't have anywhere to no, sleep. No, no. They're just too drunk <laughs> to, to stand. <laughs> But、uh, you reckon that they're pretty harmless, actually? They're, yeah, they're totally harmless. <laughs> they're funny guys. Kind of、like、sad, yeah. It is sad. Them, but but yeah, they're the four town drunks, and um, yeah, um, yeah, we love it here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the、um, let's see the the last topic I wanted to cover、um, on this on this pod. So this is also comes from a, a I don't know if it was a viewer or an email, but it says. We have a lot of good ideas and opportunities, but we found out that being a foreigner here—I、uh, guess they mean in opening a business in parentheses or start any initiative—is difficult without having a quote local front person dealing with administrative stuff for us. I mean, not because we can't get this info, this information, but more because locals, i.e., Ecuadorians, don't want to deal with gringos. What is your experience dealing with local? Providers and finding useful and often hidden information about permits, etc. This would be an interesting subject for a future video. Great question. I, I、yeah. I'm I'm excited to address this. <laughs>、um, so so、uh, you know, there's a lot of nuance here. We could spend 10, 15 minutes, which I don't know if we have the time for now or not, to to talk about. But I would disagree with the premise. Yeah. Um, Just as a disclaimer, Abundant Living Ecuador is going to be ten years old, or it has turned ten years old in January. In January, so well, almost ten we years in business. We were in, the, we were in the prep time by now. Okay, ten years ago, but、so. we opened our doors in January 2014. Right. Just saying this, so you have a lot of experience. We have a lot of experience in do doing business in Ecuador. To continue. Yeah, I mean, I came here and opened a business as a as a gringo, you know, from the northeast U.S. speaking no Spanish,、yeah. and took every lump there was to take and really learned. I mean, at this point, like I'm very good at it, and、uh, I wasn't for the first two or、yeah. three years, so it was, you know, quite a learning curve, quite a trial by fire. But yes, we have really figured this out at this point in terms of culturally how to go about things and how to, you know, how to be successful in this in this environment. So yeah, I I would personally I would really disagree with the premise that I think it was said that they don't want let me just、uh, yeah they don't want to deal with gringos. I think that's absolutely incorrect.、Um, what I would say though is that there is a way that you go about it here that if you do not 
it's just not going to go well. And I think people bump up against that and then make assumptions that it's about where they're from or, or it's about being a gringo or being yeah, a foreigner. A uh -huh. um, yeah. Because you'll have, I mean, I'll, there's a lot of people in Vilcabamba that will tell you stuff like that. Sure. You know, they'll be like, oh, Ecuadorians don't like, you know, gringos doing this. Or, no, Ecuadorians don't like her. And that's nonsense. Like, it's total, total nonsense. But if you don't know how to go about the permissioning process, the process of interacting with people in business settings, the process of interacting with the government in, in government offices, the process of accomplishing permissions and things like that. If you don't know how to go about it, yeah, it's gonna, it could seem like that. Yeah, and, and the language barrier is a big one. I think that's part of the question too. People that have been successful in business, if they didn't speak fluent Spanish, it would be a good strategy to get someone, a local person that speaks English and Spanish or bilingual, that does all of that dealing, do all those dealings for you. So you don't have to show up in your broken Spanish trying to make these things happen, which in a lot of ways, that's what we do. Yep. Yeah, so I would say like, here would be my tips and advice for this person, for this listener. Here's what I would recommend to you. So first of all, um, keep in mind that this culture is all about personal relationships and personal interactions and human to human connection and, and connections, right? So. If you're going to do it yourself, which you absolutely can, although you may decide at a later date not to, um, but if you're going to do it yourself, you need to understand that things here are disorderly. There isn't protocols that can't be, that are the same all the time for everything. Rules change all the time. Uh, people in government changes all the time. Um, the way of answering questions is different. People aren't, aren't, aren't used to giving us the information in the way our Western minds work. They give it to you in the way their minds work, which works perfectly well, but makes no sense until you understand it. So when you're going into a situation, you really need to go in with an attitude of happiness, of joy, of friendliness, of, 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 of you're gonna just go and you're gonna try and get this done and you're gonna smile and you're gonna talk to people and you're gonna trust in the good nature of the people that are here because they really are. You know, they're really good natured people and if you're nice to them and if you make friends with them, they will reciprocate and they will help you in what you're trying to accomplish. So I think the attitude number one, people, foreigners are used to getting pissy. You can't do that here. Right. Like you can't get be sharp with people. You can't be, you have to be sweet and kind no matter what. Uh, even if someone's not doing what you want, they're not helping you, or you think they're screwing you, they're not screwing you. They're just going about it the way they go about it. Um, so attitude, I think, is is crucial. Um, I think that's you know number one. Number two, you you are gonna get what you consider the runaround, but it's not on purpose. It's just the culture. So, for example, you might ask a question at a at a municipal building, right? How do I da 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 da? And, so, and they answer you. And then you find out later it really wasn't the full answer. There was other pieces that wasn't on the list or that they didn't mention or so on and so forth. And you you could, and you shouldn't, but you could take that personal, right? You could be like, they didn't tell me, it's cause I'm a great, right? You could do that whole thing. Um, it's just how it works here. They answer you very directly. So if you ask a question about this thing, they're gonna answer this thing and they're gonna answer it the way you asked it. They're not gonna like tell you all of the ancillary information and pieces that you need for it to make sense to you and with what you're trying to accomplish. They're just gonna answer your question. And you need to ask questions. Like ask more than one question. <laughs> I try to get to the bottom of everything. If I'm in one of those situations, I just, ask a lot of questions from different angles to really get the full picture because you just ask a simple question you might not get the full answer i think it's a great point i mean as a tip yeah. like that's a great tip um continue to ask questions until you understand and they're very happy to do that right sure. like they're very generous with their time i'll do the same thing right i'll ask a question i'll get the answer okay i think i maybe got this piece but now there's all the well, let me ask you, if I do it this way, if I ask this, if I go this, well, after I get that, if I take that here, is there a way to do the da da da, -da? Like, I'll keep going and sure, going sure. and going and going and going and going yep. in a very friendly way, making friends the whole time until I, until I really have what I need. 
then I'll get their phone number. Right. <laughs> you know, oh hey, you know, I really appreciate your help. Would it be possible to get your WhatsApp? So if I, you know, if I have questions or if I need something from you, da, 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 you can also you can meet with the people outside of the office. Of course, you they'll know, never say no. Never. No, they'll they'll come have a cup of coffee with you, or they'll give you their WhatsApp number happily. Yeah. Any, any of them. Really. Yeah. Even the mayor. I mean. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. Which I don't know if you want to talk about. We had a meeting with the governmental official this week for a project, and through a contact of ours, we were able to get a meeting with the the city council. Basically, it was very positive, just like you said. Uh, I mean, you have you had some prior experience with the municipality. It seems like it was a little different this time. I'm really a fan of this regime locally here. The um, the current mayor and his people. He was a. Uh, very popular. He was like a volleyball player right. that got his fame from being a volleyball player. He was not the person anybody that I rely on politically for information told me to vote for. Mm -hmm. I don't really pay attention. I just do what people I trust <laughs> tell me to do when it comes to the local politics. Right. I love the guy. I think he's I think these people are are they're not crooks. They're good hearted people. They want what's best for the, the community and for the people. Um, and they, you know, they recognize their role. Uh, and, and yeah, I mean, we, we're, you know, we're involved in, in, we do development projects and we bring, you know, some capital into the area and do different things. And like, they're, they're really wanting to help us because they want to see the jobs and they want to see, um, you know, the, 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 the sort of community benefit because a lot of the stuff we do has a big community benefit piece. Yeah. And, you know, they really recognize hey, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's a... And shall I say that being a gringo in that situation and a lot of situations could actually be in your favor. Big time. Contrary to the, 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 the comment there, actually Ecuadorians, if you, uh, if you're a smile and you're friendly and you're, you know, uh, not a jerk, <laughs> basically. Yeah. Uh, being a being a foreigner probably played in our favor in that case, right? Definitely. They were they were over the top, you know, wanting to work with us and helping us and you know making sure we understand they're in favor of what we're trying to do and they'll do whatever they can to to support the project. Um, yeah, it was really positive overall. That's, I would say in most cases that's the case. You know, if we show up as a foreigner, they kind of assume, you know, probably you're you're actually going to do what you say you're going to do. Uh, you're serious, right? You're a foreigner. They have a, a positive bias against foreigners. Mm -hmm. I mean, for, uh, for foreigners. So, no, that's a great point as well. So the last thing I'll say about this, um, the last thing I'll say about this is, so when I the first couple of years um, that I'm trying to do stuff, I was doing it all myself, and I failed at almost all of it. I made all the mistakes, right? I, I wasn't nice. I didn't understand the culture. I got frustrated. I got thought I was getting the runaround. I thought it was impossible to get anything done in this country. I failed and failed and failed and failed and failed. I finally did figure it out and got good at doing it personally once I understood, oh, it's all about relationships, it's all about connections, you have to go about it this way, you have to ask the questions this way, you have to blah, blah, blah. And then the ultimate solution for me became, I now do none of it myself at all. And I rely on trustworthy people who have all of those connections. Yes. Um, and so ultimately, I think that is the best way, For sure. but it's kind of good to be able to do it yourself if yeah. you're going to be in business. But but it's but ultimately, at the end of the day, the way everything gets done in this culture is through relationships. It's through connections. So at this point, like I would never walk into a government office and ask a question under any circumstances. I mean, that would just be a, a silly thing to do. I would go through my network. Hey, who knows someone? at such and so I, I who's and normally i only need usually you know there's there's a few three or two or three people in my rolodex that are going to know have a contact for anything that i could possibly need and i trust them and i trust their references and so so there's always a sister or a brother or a cousin or an aunt or an uncle or a friend or an associate or a this or that or the thing that works in this office or runs this department or da 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 da, da. um and so once you have that connection, then then the door is already open, right? So so then you can accomplish there. Now they're actually actively trying to help you because they know who you are. Um, and I think that's also true, you know, about reputation can do that for you as well. Yeah. You know, once you've been here a little while, you've established a good reputation. People, this is a community, this is a culture where everyone talks, you know, and there's no secrets in, in, in Ecuador. So. So if you're a good guy and people like you and respect you, 
um, they already know who you are when you walk in. And so they're, they're a little more likely to really want to help you and, 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 and so on and so forth. But yeah, at the end of the day, it's the connections, it's the relationships, and it's relying on the people who you trust who have those relationships and connections. And just making sure that those people are not milking you. Because right. there are people, there are people here who will give you the runaround simply so you can keep paying them for their service. Um, that's they're just milking you. So that you do, you know, you need to find people that you trust, that have a good reputation, that come from trusted people already. Um, but yeah, that would be my very long answer. To that. Nice, that's good. Awesome. All right, we're super late for our. Oh, we're late. Our oh, next wow. meeting. Um, we're gonna jump out of here, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we appreciate it. Please share the video, like, subscribe to the channel, do all that stuff. Hit the tagline, baby. We hope to see you here one day. And until then, see you next time. If you're interested in real estate properties, all of our property videos will now be uploaded on a different channel. Please click the link in the description down below.